Council's Board of Education meeting. This is the April 14th, 2022 meeting. Notice of this meeting has been advertised in the Grand Island Independent, which is the district's designated method of giving notice of these meetings. We want those in attendance to know that copies of the Open Meetings Act are available at the entrance uh, to the boardroom. If anyone in attendance is interested in addressing our board, you are welcome to do so. We simply request that you complete the appropriate form and turn it into us so that you may be recognized during the request to address the board part of our meeting. If you have not already completed the form, please see the staff person outside the entrance to this room. Public comment is welcome. We do ask that no signs be brought into the boardroom. Mrs. Simmons, would you please take roll? Mrs. Albers? Present. Mr. Barsonis? Yes. Mrs. Hinkle? Present. Mr. Hawley? Present. Mrs. Jurgens? Ms. Wolf has given notice that she may be late. Mr. Brown? Present. Dr. Bros? Present. Mr. Holinsky? Present. Next is the mission statement. Mr. Holinsky, please read the mission statement. Every student, every day, a success. In educating students, we teach hearts as well as minds. Within the school district of Grand Island, every student has access to high quality, cultural, responsive, and engaging learning environments. Every student will develop literacy skills across disciplines. Every student is socially and emotionally equipped to thrive in a school and in life. Every student will graduate as a college career and community ready citizen. Thank you. Uh, item number four. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight is the consent agenda. The consent agenda to be approved is as follows. 4.1, minutes from the previous month's meeting. 4.2, acceptance of agendas from standing committees. 4.3, claims as submitted. 4.4, bid proposals as submitted. 4.5, staff adjustments as submitted. 4.6, treasurer's report as submitted. 4.7, policy. 4.7.1, 4640, Information Technology Management on First Read. 4.7.2, 8415, Medications in School on First Read. 4.7.3, 8741, Early Graduation on First Read. 4.8, Approval of Agenda as Submitted. This is the consent agenda as published. Would anyone like to remove any items or add any items to the consent agenda? Agenda. Does anyone have a potential conflict of interest on agenda item 4.3? If so, please state the check number that you will be abstaining from voting on. Mr. Barsonis. I will be abstaining from check number 81896, but I approve the rest are submitted. Ms. Jurgens. I'll be abstaining from check number 81896, but I approve of all other as submitted. Thank you. We have a motion. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda as submitted. Mr. Barsonis and Mr. Brown, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Did I miss all these? No, that was, did I miss a bunch of stuff? Okay. Oh, I got it? Okay, I went too far. God, sorry guys. Okay, now we have special recognition. Um, Mr. Barsness is going to take over, so Dr. Grover and I can go down there and see everybody, but we're going to meet with the state speech duo champions first. Do you want to use that? Do you have that? Do you want that? Can we just stay down there for all of us? Yeah. So they can be here. You don't have to call their names, I think. Are you going to do their names? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll get it started. Thank you. It makes my job easier. <laughs> no problem. Uh, good, e good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation. I'm honored and pleased as the executive principal of Grand Island Senior High to have this opportunity to recognize 
some of our extraordinary accomplishments uh, of the Grand Island Senior High students this evening. Um, we have had, if you didn't know, I'll tell you again, we had an outstanding winter and spring season in all of our activities and uh, obviously spring is still going strong um, and we're looking forward to the completion of our, our uh, not only activity, um, fine arts and athletic events uh, this spring. But tonight we want to hear uh, from our amazing group of coaches and sponsors, uh, some of them to, to really get the details of those accomplishments this evening. And to get this all kicked off, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Jonathan Boyd, our speech and debate uh, sponsor to the podium. Mr. Boyd, hopefully he's behind me. Come on up, there he is. Hi guys, um, it's good to finally be up here. Um, I'm here to introduce our speech team. Um, like Mr. Gilbertson said, I am the head coach at Grand Island Senior High this year for our speech team and our mock trial team. And this year we had um, something historic happen to us. Uh, time, hard work, and uh, a whole lot of talent paid off. And we had two young ladies that won a state championship in duo, which is our first state championship that has been earned at Grand Island Senior High since 2004 in any event in speech. So I want to introduce... Oh, thank you. So I'd like to introduce uh, my assistant coach, Laura Lee Thunker, and Elaine Abraham, a senior, who is one part of the duo, and Ann Martinez, another senior who is another part of the duo. So uh, in speech, there are 10 different competitive events that the kids can uh, compete in. They made it all the way through 12 different tournaments, qualified um, at districts, and then ended up winning the state championship against the 16 top other duo teams um, at the state competition in Kearney. So thank you so much. And uh, if the ladies, do you want to say anything? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we're good. So thank you. Yeah, coming up, and you might have mentioned us. I was getting set up. So this is the first state championship since two thousand four. Yes. Correct. So. You just come up this, yeah. Thank you. Are the parents, are there parents or family that want to take a picture before they step down? No? Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. And now we're going to go to 5.2, the Scholastics Arts Award of Nebraska. Is that correct? There we go. Actually, we have oh. one ahead of that. Yes, uh, we are looking at introducing uh, Miss Taryn Wright, Miss Alicia Lechner, Miss Jesse Ahrens to the podium for the state championship unified cheerleaders. Is what I had. Thank you. Perfect. Let's go ahead and come on in. It is five point three on your agenda. Hi there, we are the Grand Island Unified Cheer Team. We consisted of 12 members this year and we competed against eight other unified schools um, at state this year and we took first place. So we're very proud of our girls and thank you. Today with us we have Miss Haley Hoare, we have Angela Gabe, we have Abby Christensen, we have Montana Weber, Renoa Garcia, and Alexis Moni, but she's a little shy, so she doesn't want to come in. <laughs> and then I have Coach Alicia and Coach Jesse here with me as well. They help coach the, um, the regular varsity and junior varsity cheer teams at Gish. Okay. Congratulations. Sure. 
as they're getting set for pictures, does anybody have any questions? Just moving out of the way for the picture. You guys can go up there, okay? Good job. Yes. And again, Kelly's going to be taking a picture, so as soon as they're done, if any parents, family want to take pictures and come up, you can do that as well. Friends and family, if you want to get closer to take a picture, you can. Thank you and thank you and congratulations. Good job. Good job. We're gonna go to back to 5.2. Got out of order there. And now it's the Scholastics Art Awards of Nebraska. And you know, often I get people to say, "I'm gonna tell your last name wrong," so it's my time to butcher some last names. Mr. Gilberson, you were going to say something. Yeah, if I may just uh, introduce uh, Miss Mickey Noose and Mr. Casey Lammers. And I just want to add our, our am amazing students are the competitors, but our amazing coaches and sponsors make it all happen too. So uh, we are so grateful for all of them. Come on in. Hi, I am Mickey Noose, and I am the art teacher, one of the art teachers at Grand Island Senior High. And we are celebrating um, three gold key awards for art. So is there somewhere I can plug in so you can see it? Okay, so first up, we have Tia Broadwell. She is a senior. She could not come tonight because she has cabaret. Um, but this is a charcoal drawing, and it is mixed media. She cut out the words from um, a crossword puzzle she did over Christmas break. It's a very large piece, and it's very eye-popping. Hello, I am Mr. Lammers, first year art teacher, Grand Island Senior High. Um, Isaac Rivera in absentia today. Um, he did this self-portrait on cardboard, so an untraditional material, um, using value tones and charcoal, um, making it look just like him. So very well done, Isaac. And then we have Anae Perez. And she is an 11th grader at Grand Island. And do you want to tell them about your art? It's, <laughs> it's made of ceramics. And it is a bust. And she got a gold key award. She did very well. And that's it. That is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
When you said the first piece is a large piece, how big is that piece of art? Um, about, I want to say that it is about 32 inches tall. Okay. And then double that width because wow. it's made on two different pieces. Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. Coming up here, we're going to get a picture taking. You can come you can get closer. I was wondering, I'm like, where did he go? <laughs> Promise I wasn't <laughs> hiding from you. All right. Um, last but not least, we would like to invite uh, Mr. Daryl Hawley, the principal of the Academy of Technical Sciences. He will introduce our competitors from the Skills USA uh, uh, competition uh, over the last weekend. So, Mr. Hawley. All right, thank you. Well, after uh, about a two-year hiatus, the uh, Skills USA competition uh, returned to Grand Island this last uh, Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And from the uh, group that we had this year, we had 31 participants in 18 different events, uh, nine medalists from these events, and two state champions who I have here with me today. Uh, Hazard. IELTS is a state champion in the mouse trap car distance category. And Nathan Mosley is a state champion in diesel technology, and he qualifies for the national competition in Atlanta, Georgia this uh, June. Yeah. <clears throat> With Hazard's car, I don't know if you guys uh, were able to see that, but it was quite the miracle. Um, he, uh, the competition uh, was pretty close. Uh, he had one final run to go. It went 96 feet, I believe. Um, in the building at CPI, it went 300 feet. So we knew that it was capable of absolutely destroying the competition. Um, the surface didn't exactly uh, play well with this car. Uh, it spun out, I think it went three feet on the first run, and then eventually uh, Hazard worked really, really hard to get it uh, back on track, and of course now he's a state champion. Uh, Nathan, as part of the diesel technology competition, um, he went through an interview process, which he scored the highest out of anybody in the, uh, the whole category. So he got a, a kind of a sub award out of that as well. There's also electronics and there's then of course working on the truck itself. So congratulations to those two, these two young men. <laughs> and of course I want to recognize Mr. Sell who helped Hazard prepare his car and Mr. Trout who was uh, Nathan's instructor in automotive technology. Thank you. And coming up, coming up so we can get your picture taken. Thank you.
Thank you, all the coaches, all the teachers. Mr. Gerberson, thank you for bringing everybody in. And with that, we're going to go to campus highlights. It's 6.1. Take it over. Okay. <laughs> I turned around and tell you fall. I know, seriously. Okay. The impact of when, what I need time. Uh, Hannah Pogue and Brad Wolf. Hannah, did I pronounce your name right? Yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Grover and President Albers, Board of Education. Uh, I'm Brad Wolf and I'm Principal of West Westridge, and I brought also Kayla Wickman, our Assistant Principal. And H Hannah Pogue is our seventh grade ELA teacher, and she is finishing up her administration degree. And so, as you know, when you're finishing up that and you have classes, they want the buildings to provide leadership opportunities. And so, Hannah, we, we wanted Hannah to be able to provide this win time uh, information to you. So, she's going to be the one to talk to you about it and also have a little video. Okay, so I first want to thank uh, Mr. Wolf for allowing me to give this presentation today. Thank you. Keep going. Okay. And when I was thinking about how I wanted to present this, I really wanted the kids to be able to give their voice because they're really why we're here. So I made a video where they are able to kind of tell you how they feel about wind time. One second. My sound's not working. We have a quarry, so he can fix it. Is your pocket full? Sick. There we go. It's that easy. The win and win time stands for what I need. At Westridge, it's exactly that. Every three to four weeks, teachers choose roughly 15 students who need more repetition or extension on a specific skill in their content area. Sixth grade social studies students used tangrams in order to recreate a story that they had read. Seventh graders showed off their design skills by making rockets that they felt would be the most aerodynamic. In eighth grade language arts, students created a podcast that replicated the story that they read in their textbook. Specifically chose students in that group 
to help, like practice what they need to be helped on. One time it helped me in science because we made a bridge and it made me understand like how structures work. One time gets me prepared by us reviewing what we're learning in class and getting me ready for the school environment for the day. Every student. Every day. Okay, so they were really excited to help me do this. I think the hardest part was getting them to act natural. When they know that you're taking pictures of them, they kept wanting to look at me or act super weird. I'm like, just do what you're doing. So I kind of had to sneak into classrooms and just start taking pictures when they didn't realize I was taking them. Uh, but they were really excited about it and they wanted to know, um, you know, what was I doing this for, all that kind of stuff. So. Sharing that with them was a really cool experience for me as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just one second. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Nope. I, <coughs> what, when do you have this, or when, when does it happen for the kids? If you um, said that, I it is it. in the morning. So okay. the first 25 to 30 minutes of the day, it kind of gets them set up for um, their day, just to kind of get them ready to be successful in whatever content they go to first. Thank you so much. Well done. Thanks. Six point two. Informing instructional decisions through the use of technology. Mr. Twos, Miss Thorne. I was like McLean. Okay. Sorry, Miss Botsford. I had to and uh, Miss Miles. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jim Tews, and I'm the principal at Wasmer Elementary. And we're really thrilled to be here uh, this evening to talk to you about what we have been doing with our use of our Title I funds. And uh, this is a dilemma we face every year, is tying our resources that we have uh, in the form of Title I funds to our school improvement plan. And one of the issues we constantly grapple with with our school improvement plan is closing the achievement gap. And so what we had to do really this year is sit back and say, how is it that we can best close the achievement gap using the resources that we have? And one of the things that we really focused on was teacher verify, and that's teacher verification of student learning as well as actionable feedback that they can use to inform their instruction right away. Now, previously, our teachers had been doing teacher verify by walking around the classroom with a clipboard, and they would have the various uh, standards or, or learning goals, and they would make little check marks and, and little notes on there. And then we would have a you know, big stack of papers at the end of the day to which they could compile into uh, some sort of spreadsheet to do this. But what we were really looking for was a way to get immediate feedback. And this is where our Title I funds came in, is this year we ordered Apple TVs uh, to connect to our projectors so that we could have projection availability. And we also ordered iPads that go with them. And so this gave the teachers uh, the ability to roam throughout the room with their technology and to take instant feedback from how, verify how the students are doing. And they could, they could look, they could instantly just with a tap do this and they could look all at once, they can project things and they can modify their instruction on the spot based on the student needs. And so now that we had figured out what we wanted to do, it was how do we do this? And luckily we have a couple of our um, second grade teachers who are very technology savvy and not only that but they are some of the most amazing instructional leaders uh, they've stepped up this is not something that I asked them to do but they're just natural born leaders and they took this on and they are currently um, teaching other schools what we do now for teacher verify so I would like to share this with you I have Mrs. McLean Botsford and Miss Emerald Miles Hey, good evening, everybody. We'll get started. <laughs> we kind of put together just a little presentation for you guys to show you some of the things that Mr. Tooze was talking about. 
um, and then some additional things that we've done outside of just with this. So, um, We'll get started with the teacher verify and our pacing. This has changed everything for us in the classroom. We used to be the stationary teachers who had to be by their computers, clicking through a PowerPoint, or trying to share something on the computer. We now are able, like Mr. Tu said, to walk around the classroom and actually engage with students during their work. This has been so nice. We actually have taken task force documents and we've just adjusted them a little bit to make them work for us so we can do it at a click of a button. So you'll see the little picture with all the colors on it. That's actually a document with student names on it so I can go through and check the standards up top and see if they're meeting them. It is so nice to just be able to now go around and actually see my students work before I was making mental notes or losing my clipboard around the classroom and trying to keep track of all the paper. Um, in addition to that, we're actually able to now take and give actionable, actionable feedback. So we have students, you'll see a student's work in math, and this is something we call our favorite no, where we stop and we talk about the work. So we grab a quick picture, the picture's so clear, we don't have to use their little whiteboards to show everybody the work. The picture's big on the screen and we're able to talk about how there was a misconception in the classroom. They love getting to see them up on the screen. It's something where even though a student did choose the wrong thing or was a little bit off, he was not embarrassed. He was proud and then able to explain what his thinking was and then as a class we worked through kind of why he was close but just not there. So it was something really cool to see where a lot of the times we find kiddos who are afraid to mess up or they're embarrassed to mess up but he was proud because we were taking his picture and then showing it up onto the big whiteboard for everybody to be able to see. Um, a couple of other things, the students are more on task. Um, as I'm able to monitor their groups, their instruction, I'm not, like Ms. Miles said, right at the computer. I'm able to walk around with my iPad in my hands. Um, it's less wait time for me to change an activity where I simply close out of an app, open up a new one, um, and it allows me to continue my lesson right when the students are ready. So. You'll see a few pictures of some student engagement. We're able to work in groups and actually control behaviors around the room a little bit better. The proximity makes a big difference in the classroom. So you'll see a lot of student teaming in our rooms. Um, we're even getting a little bit more engagement out of it. Like we said, when we're able to post a picture of a group who's doing the right thing and just have it up on the board, students are beginning to wonder, how did that group get up on the board. So you're able to almost change your classroom without even having to Explain say it. somebody's mm -hmm. name or point out something that was a wrong behavior. Yeah. I often find the first time I ever did this, right when we received our iPads, I quick took a picture of a group that was ready, they had out their materials, and I flashed it up onto the whiteboard with no explanation, and they were like, oh, what? What? Why, why am I up there? And then I went through and I said, well, why don't you look at that group? And they realized, oh my gosh, every student has their workbooks out. I need to do that too. And so it's a little competition now who can get posted up onto the whiteboard. Um, a couple of positive support things that we've been doing and able to do with our iPads. Um, I use Class Dojo within my classroom for some classroom management things. The nice convenient thing is I quick switch out of my iPad, I pull up the Dojo app, give some points, and then I'm right back in. No matter where I'm at, I could be working with a group here, and I see someone over there doing their job, I quit get to do that. Um, and like I said, they just love to be able to see themselves and then explain. I have this year such great mathematicians where they want to tell their strategy. They're like, Mrs. Botsford, can you take my picture? I want to explain what I did. Really awesome to see because in the past that hasn't always happened, but they're able to see themselves and then work through their stuff with the rest of the class too. Um, we've in added in some engagement um, strategies like a showdown where you have back to back to partners and then you're able to turn and talk. And while this is happening, we're able to go to each group and talk to them while actually conducting that teacher verify as well. So it is very nice. We sent out a survey to our staff, um, sent a couple of emails just to kind of get their feedback too. It's 
two of us talking to you, but we wanted to share with what some of our other teachers were saying. Um, one from each grade level, uh, the one that I like the most. In short, the iPad and Apple TV have been a game changer. Um, it helps me correct misconceptions, verify learning within the natural flow of teaching. Um, they're learning to work more with things that they struggled with in the past, and they're able to do that because of their iPad. And we'll follow it up with some student feedback. We love to hear from them. They have so many good things to say. Uh, we did notice we do Zoom announcements in the morning. And so that's been able to keep all of us safe. Um, we do have a big school, so everybody's still able to be a part of the Zoom announcements. I have students in my own room who are very excited about announcement time. And now with the iPads, I'm able to show all the students in the class. So they are seen, their W's are high in the air for Wasmer Wildcats. <laughs> I also thought it was fun, um, the one in the middle. It's fun watching the teacher struggle and then finally figure it out. Um, it also has Clever. We're able to download those district approved apps. Um, so a student said it has Clever. So it has everything that teachers need. So right at the fingertips here. So uh, that's all we got for you. Thank you. Any questions for us? So I, I have to say, yeah. you two and your smiles and, and your very cool names, by the way. Um, we all needed this today. We, so often we hear just bad stuff. We hear how unhappy teachers are and we hear how unhappy people are. And then you two come up here and you are so excited. And I, we needed this. We needed you here tonight. My heart is full now because uh, I almost was getting verklempt, but I didn't. <laughs> but just thank you for coming, and thank you for your excitement, and thank you for what you do for our, all these students at GIPS. It just means the world to us, and it is the reason we sit around this horseshoe. Yeah. And so just thank you. And We appreciate you letting us come. Oh, well, <laughs> that's nice. In, forgive me. Miss Wolf. <laughs> or, were you, were you, did you your thought finish? Is my you thought said, ever finished? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, I was just going to mention um, in the in the realm of I work in post secondary post secondary education, and when I've been in classrooms where you don't have to connect to a wire, um, I was going to say I also you know it's just so much easier for that classroom engagement on all sides with your students, but for you yourself. And I was going to say um, I saw that you had Nearpod on there, and of course Kahoot Student, but just um, for fun, in case any of our um, the fellow board members don't know what either of those apps are or those teaching resources are. Could you share? And thank you. Yes. There are a variety of apps um, as well as the Nearpod. There's a Go Noodle, um, a couple of those student engagement ones. Um, we use them a lot as a review for our content, um, a fun little game type way to engage in our learning. Um, a lot of the times, I know you use the Nearpod, I've used Kahoot when it comes to a knowledge review. Um, they're able to be on their computers, and then it's something that we are controlling the game here, and it's convenient to be able to walk around kind of observing, whereas in the past, you have to be here to click to the next question, um, where you're able to watch around, see what those students are doing, um, a variety of different apps that we've found useful for us to do that. The Nearpod that I have used, I used during knowledge, a knowledge review that we did, and oh my goodness, my students were so amazed. I had to stop and share right after class. I did a discussion board piece, and what they were able to do, we have second grade, so some of them were typing out their responses and answering questions. Everybody could be involved in this discussion board, and they could see each other's responses. They just couldn't see their names. But mm -hmm. they don't just have to type they can also speak into the computer. And I also had some of them adding pictures. Mm -hmm. At this time, we were talking about the Civil War, and they have been working in media skills, yes. getting down how to search different things as well. So I had pictures. I had voice um, for some students who weren't able to type yet. And then I did have some very lengthy discussions over the Civil War. <laughs> So it was very fun. And they said, we have to do this one again. It was the most fun they've had for a yeah. review. So. No, thank you so much. And greatly appreciate the work that you do for GIPS and our students. 
Mr. Bursness. Uh, thank you again. Just got a text from, you know, everybody's watching from outside world. Got a text from a, a parent that says you guys are rock stars at what you're doing. So <laughs> thank you for adapting and teaching our kids using technology. I figure Erica was asking to explain the apps because we're older. She's the one that gets the apps we don't, right? <laughs> Yeah, right. We, we're tech savvy. But no, thank you. And your, your, your passion for it. So um, not only your kiddos are watching, thank you for what you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. Agenda item seven, um, request to address the board. I don't have any sheets. No? Okay. Um, so we will skip over uh, recess and reconvene. Uh, item number 10, information, 10.1, robotics update. Mr. Phillips, Mr. Chemnitz, pronounce that name for me. Chemnitz. Chemnitz, thank you. We should have brought the other one. <laughs> We're having a heck of a time tonight, and we haven't had an issue in months. So. Yeah, who is it? Yes. What did you do? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alex Chemnitz. I teach uh, robotics and alternative energy at the Academy of Grand Island Senior High School. Um, I also have the distinct privilege of uh, being the, the sponsor of the robotics club at Grand Island Senior High. Um, we're kind of doing like a GISH robotics, what have we been doing, where are we going kind of update for you. Um, and instead of me waxing poetic for minutes about robotics, which I can do, trust me, um, I figure we should have some students serve as some ambassadors here. Um, I want to introduce uh, Cadence Anthony and Taviana Butler here. These are uh, women in STEM who are fantastic at what they do, and they can probably explain better than what I do because they do the work in the class. So without further ado, here they are. Okay, so our presentation is GISH Robotics. What is it like being in robotics? You get put into a group of people and you have to learn how to work together and reach your end goal. You and your group also work together to figure out how to reach your goal. And we also have an engineering notebook where we write notes and it helps you remember what you did wrong and what you need to fix. And we also learn how to code and build a robot to do different tasks. Okay. This year's competition was tipping point. So the red and blue mobile goals are alliance goals, and then the yellow goals are neutral goals. And then there are hoops that you want to try and put on the mobile goals. And there's also two robots on each side. So you want to get as many points as possible. And you can also try and go up the ramp on the side for more points. Here's a video of what our robot was doing, and I think this was our last competition. Here, right now, we're in autonomous, and we are going and adding hoops and to score more points and on our mobile goal. And this was one of the ones that our hoop lift did amazing at. So it would go down, and then it would go and scoop up the mobile goal, and then we would bring it up, and then we would try and put hoops on it with the hoop lift. And so then we would drive in. We could go up the ramp for more points. Okay. We spent, why we spent so much time outside of school on it is because we wanted our robot to work and be consistent, and we had a lot of fun working together and building and we wanted it to be ready for competitions.
Why did we go to all the con competitions? We wanted to see how well our robot would do against other robots. We also were really proud of how our robot was doing, and it was a learning experience to see how successful our robot could be. Okay. Our experiences as girls in robotics, it was adventurous. There was times guys thought that we didn't build the parts that we actually did, and it was fun, we had good times. Um, and why we want more girls is to show that it's not just a boys thing, that girls can also do it too. And we don't, we wanna like even it out, so then we're not, there's not a whole bunch of boys and we have like a mixture of girls and boys. Uh, so these students, right, all these students here, what you call like a model of what we want to see, you know, at Grand Island Senior High, right? This is it. This is the profile of a graduate here, right? This is these students. Um, so um, for me, like, these students fuel my passion. Um, I, I didn't realize I had a passion trying to get women in STEM until I worked with these ladies. Um, and I think it's worth noting that both Tavi and Cadence have gotten into the Girls Who Code Summer Academy, which is fantastic. So that's a round of applause for them. Um, so they'll take those skills and help us out next year, hopefully, right? Um, so our, as our next steps here. Um, this year, so we, right now we work on just, uh, on just like an elective class basis where um, students from any academy, any uh, uh, like grade level come in to work on robots, which is fantastic. But I've got students, this group included, who will take nights and weekends and Christmas breaks and spring breaks and even their Thursday nights for a board meeting come and help, help do robot stuff, right? Um, and I thought, oh my gosh, these students deserve more than just an elective class. So we're trying to get a club rolling. Um, right now we have elective classes, which are about 20 students each. And we, we've kind of ironed it out. We've got a really good program rolling with that. Um, but it's time to build it out. So we, um, thanks to uh, Dr. Dexter, we've gotten some, uh, um, some funding to produce to get a three-team robotics club going. So ideally three competitive robots um, next year to go to, we're playing about nine tournaments. So a lot, a lot, a lot of robots going on. And then we're also going to host our own tournament next year um, in February. So that'll be, I think we iron out the date with Cindy Wells for the fourth. So, um, which will be just fantastic. And we need volunteers. So, <laughs> so it'll it's really uh, fantastic stuff. We've got a lot of good things cooking here. And um, if you like that, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> um, I tell students I'm going to retire my Twitter money. So um, we do um, a lot of great stuff on Twitter. Um, we, all the stuff, we have videos, we have updates for competitions. So really, um, at Islander Robots on Twitter couldn't be easier. So um, thank you for giving your time to us. We really appreciate it. These students really appreciate it, and they appreciate the opportunity. So thank you. Alex, you want to introduce all Yeah, I can do that. Um, so the students we've got here today, we have Elaine Abraham. Yeah, sorry, I never say last names in class. Who is also is, 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 a, is a dual, what you call a dual athlete, right? Also <laughs> renowned for her speech abilities too. Um, along with Tavi and Kaden, we also got William Hadfield here. We've got Isai Messias, Alex Roser, Aiden Goeki, Goki. Again, I don't do last names in my class, so. <laughs> um, we've got Scott Eddy, Orion Miller. And then Seth Nelson in the back there. These are all people who put in just a tremendous amount of time. And these are just a small sample of our, of our growing club. So, yeah, thank you very much. Just one second in case we have some questions for you. Oh, absolutely. Are you going to need Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, thank you, and again, thank you for your passion. It's obvious that you, you love this, and um, I think for every uh, one female graduate out of STEM, there's five jobs, so it is a great, great field for women. Um, so thank you for all of you for being involved. You are a dual athlete. It doesn't matter if you don't pick up a ball. You're still a dual athlete. Um, Mr. Barsness? Uh for the young women that spoke, I know you were nervous, but I love the terminology we're using. And we did a tour last in February at the high school. I was showing pictures and happened to run into a, a professional in the community who said, oh, I know this guy. I'm very proud of him. So your mom told me to say hi next time I saw you. <laughs> OK. But for the young women, if you could just, I know you shared in the PowerPoint. You might be nervous, but why? What's fun about doing what you're doing and what building and playing? Could you just share a little bit more about why is it fun for you? Is the question for me or for the students? For the students. For the students. Yep. 
and you shared in the PowerPoint. I just want to, you know, you've mentioned there, you want more women in STEM, and this might be a, what many perceive as a, a, a male or a, more of a boy. It's a game, video game. There, I see the remotes that look familiar to what my boys play, right? But you as young women in STEM, what's fun about building and playing with robotics? Well, it's just, it can be like adventurous. Like there's a lot of moments that it's just fun, like just focusing on building a robot and putting the thinking into how you're going to create it for the game. It's just, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've been coding since sixth grade. So I was also in Girls That Code, and I was coding with women in Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, and there was another state, I think it was Colorado. And we all came together during the summer and we coded. Uh, I just recently joined the robotics team this past semester, and it was a truly fantastic experience. Um, in my class alone, I am the only girl. So all the girls decided to go to the other block. There, there are three other girls besides, well, there are three other girls besides me that are in robotics. But it was a, it was a, a unique experience being with a bunch of males in my class and uh, coming in and trying to fit in and make sure that I didn't overstep boundaries as far as coding came. But um, it was fun. It was fun. I like managing things, so I was very much organized and making sure that a robot got to the place it needed to be on time, which was a task in itself. Um, I would say, like, working with the team and growing that bond that you have together, and you can even make friendships off of you working together, and it just is a lot. Well, thank you. You're doing great. Thank you for sharing your passion. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Barsonis. Ms. Wolf? Uh, it's my first day. Um, <laughs> first of all, I would like to know, and any student can answer, um, what is your favorite thing about Mr. Kimnitz? Go. Ooh. Personality. Oh. Just go. His teaching ability? He is very much, um, what, what, you ask him a question, he's like, I don't know, go figure it out. And then you figure it out, and that's how you become a better coder, and that's how you become a better student. So, yeah. Thank you. And then um, for Mr. Kimnitz, I was curious, you said you have funding available, and I believe it's ESSER dollars. Yeah. So is it like for a limited time? I feel like I'm doing a sales yeah. commercial. Yeah. Um, are you, do you know that you're going to have it potentially after the ESSER dollars, or how is that going to work? Yeah, um, I, I have been trying to use the ESSER dollars as like a get us rolling kind of fund, right? Because uh, um, after I believe it's... Um, a few years, I can tell you exactly, um, but Dr. Dexter knows um, we uh, um, that, that we no longer receive that those dollars. So the whole idea is we take some time to get rolling. So we have like a one time, um, maybe us a one time uh, I, I, amount of funding to start a tournament, which will help us get rolling really well. And then they're going to fund the actual club itself for a few years after that. So um, which is great to get us on our feet, you know, to because because robotics is is, is a um, out of all we can say that the club style extracurriculars is very expensive. So and and the um, in order to stay competitive and in order to stay um, relevant and do more of the like, really interesting things, um, you, you need the funding behind it too. So having the dollars available makes our lives way easier. Um, and then in the future, we'll look for sponsorships and stuff and, and really grow our skills that way. I think a mini grant um, application is in your future, but thank you very much. Can I chime in there? Um, we're actually uh, working through um, the the green weevil the the guys that have done the green weevil so they're they've already secured funding and they're working on more funding through the the government to be able to sponsor and participate so they want to get involved with the team which is awesome because they have great experiences and they're also looking at potential funding and sponsorship dollars with that so another uh, public private partnership to 
to get this going. And what I'm most proud of, not only Alex's passion, but this is just their second year. So we've only offered robots as, as two years. So the first year was just a class. This year they started off um, just watching a few competitions and then got their toes in and, and then we're making finals by the, the end of the, the, end the year. Of the year. Yep. So a lot of progress in, in a very short amount of time. Very awesome. Thank you, students, for answering my questions. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Well, I'm going to date myself because when I was a kid, we had uh, uh, erector sets, yeah. and then we had car batteries and trolling motors that we made our robots out of. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun, but not a lot of guidance, and this is a, a, a such a good pro, a program. Um, we, I've been to the competitions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, and they're fun. They are definitely. Um, this it's very stressful. I know that when you're when you're getting ready to go and making sure you got the robot in the time. In time, um, we have a couple fans of uh, a couple other battle bots, for instance. So, do you guys get to have fun and and do some battle bots? Well, we kind of do it in class. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I figured you would. I mean. Um, so, so the like, like the Vex competitions are set up like it's a two v two format, which yeah. um, really adds a lot of soft skills to the STEM. Um, now, it's, the goal is not like battle bots to like like disable right. the other bot, right. but like I say, rubbing's racing. So sometimes like, like this bot here, um, it's it's geared down, so it will just push another bot out of the way, and that disturbs them very well, you know, because you can just just overpower the other one. Right. Um, but the you know, but yeah, it's very similar. I mean, you walk into a robotics tournament, and it's like, oh, that's cool. So um, it, it's it's we sat there for I think eight hours one day just staring at robots, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I always liked about the competitions is it's different. So like every competition you might go to, it's something. Um, the tasks are different, yeah. and that's what I think is. The glory about this is you mm -hmm. gotta put your thinking cap on and figure out how you're gonna do those things. Yeah, and ours changed from year to year. Yeah. So what year you saw year. was year mm -hmm. to year, but it's still, I mean, it, it changes every time. And you know, especially as the students catch on, um, like the, the early, like the early year tactics and the late game, late year tactics are different. You know, yeah. so they have to stay up almost on, on forums and stuff and watch competitions and watch film of their of themselves. It almost ends up being like almost like a, a football. You have to watch right. film later on to see how could we have improved our performance there. Right. Um, and so they, they discuss tactics and stuff, and, and it evolves and changes throughout the whole year. It's just awesome. I, it's great to get this off the ground and going. So good luck. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Helensky. Everybody's kind of taken my questions already, but uh, how much time are we looking at right here on the floor? Oh, my. <laughs> like, like, over, over, like, I know you guys say you're working through breaks and things like that, but that doesn't that doesn't give me a number or a percentage of, of spare time. What are, what are we looking at here? Um, so over winter break, I came in for about ten hours. ten hours to work on this robot, and then we had class time to work on it. So it took a lot of hours. And how do you decide who builds what? Or I mean, I mean, how does this all this? I, I don't know this, you know. Um, but it's 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 interesting. Um, it's something that's coming up in the future. I, I I had a former employee who who is now a head engineer at JBL because he figured out some pretty cool speakers that we now use for my business, um, and it was all because of stuff like this. It's it's in, it's 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 futuristic. I mean, we're, we're we're talking about you know Terminator Judgment Day type stuff coming up here, um, but this to me. Um, I, I can't even put this into words how cool just looking at that is um, and I applaud you because as, as Terry said I mean it was it was Legos and erector sets uh, car batteries and and rubber bands and and paper clips that's how we that's how we did stuff back then um, and this is just phenomenal um, and I applaud all of you um, and then one more comment and I promise I'll, I'll stop gabbing um, for your teacher this is second year, is that correct? Yeah. Because team members, team members, they flourish and they want to be led by a good leader. And the fact that this program has grown this much already in two years says an awful lot about the people leading the program. So keep that in mind. Keep it up. Um, I hope to see twice as many kids in here next year. So thank you. Thank you so much. You guys did a great job. Congratulations.
go on to 10.2 review of the 2021 annual report. Mitch, Kelly, and BB. All right. Thank you, board and Dr. Grover, for granting us space to share this evening. I'm really excited because you don't get to just hear from me tonight, which is awesome. Um, the annual report, you all have a hard copy of it next to your computers, and then we are going to take a look at the electronic version on the screen here. That's not new, right? We do this every year, but it's new for us. Um, our team is, a lot of our team makeup is new, it's bigger, and this was a huge undertaking for us, and um, Ms. Worthington couldn't be with us this evening, but she is a part of this as well, too. And we really just wanted to not only share the annual report with this group and walk you through it for a couple of minutes, but also share our communications and marketing team with you to let you know that what you hold in your hands is an annual report that we are incredibly proud of, but has been built in all in-house with our talent and our expertise and our storytelling. And that is not something that we could say every year. And so we wanted to share that with you. So um, I'm going to introduce our team. So this is uh, Kelly Mayhew. You all know who she is. She's been with us for a while now. And then this is Bibi Luvino. She's been with us for about three and a half, four months. They are both incredibly talented. I'm going to give them some space to kind of share with you about this because this isn't just uh, an opportunity for us to report um, some important things to our community and our constituents every year. It's a storytelling opportunity to help people see who we are at GIPS for the last year. So Kelly Mayhew was uh, one of the main project managers on this project as we collaborated with myself, uh, Dr. Grover, and Ms. Worthington. So she's going to talk to you a little bit about that process, and then we're going to let Bibi come up here and talk to you about how she brought storytelling to the design elements that she used in this, and then we'll walk through a couple of the pages just to talk about some key highlights. Good evening and thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to present this to you. First, I just want to say I am just incredibly proud to be here at Grand Island Public Schools and to work with this team, uh, with Mitch and BB, that we get to be the vessels to share the great stuff our students and our staff are doing. That I'm really honored to do that. And so the annual report, really, I look at it as the district's yearbook. You know, what are we proud of? Um, what strides do we need to make? Um, what strides have we made? And so, you know, we gathered that information. We um, wanted to tell the story of that cradle to career, um, what we are aiming to do for kids to help them to succeed um, and have a plan after high school. And I got to work with an awesome designer, Bibi, who we brought on board. So I'll let her kind of give a little bit there's uh you know you have the the paper copy and this will be in households um, across the community but awesome well thank you guys for having us here and um, this was my first big project here so that was kind of exciting so they like told me that we have this annual report that we do every year but we want to make it a little different a little new but still represent our GIPS. So I took that task and I decided to just kind of sit down and just like let myself just play around with different things. And that's how I kind of work. I like to be creative when I can be, but be consistent and then create like a professional kind of design. So as you see here, you know, I used a lot of like circular elements. And because, you know, I don't know, I have dogs that love bubbles. And I'm like, bubbles are circular and that's kind of fun. And plus it helps kind of move things along. It's a very, you know, in motion shape. Um, so when I look at like things like shapes, to me they represent more than just the shape they are. They have different definitions to them. They can um, represent different things or ideals or you know personalities so I wanted to take that and I took it throughout this whole design and we kind of agreed that we wanted from that elementary like you know startup all the way to your high school and like preparing the student and what we're doing for them to go to like a college level or career level 
So kind of just use that. And then I just had fun. Um, Kelly helped me a lot with the pictures. You know, that was kind of exciting for me. I've not been able to work with photos that are not stock photos. So it was kind of cool to be like picking these students out and putting them in here and like having them be part of this too, like represent what GIPS is, but like, you know, someone could pick it up and say, oh, I recognize that student. That, that's a cool idea to me. So kind of just like kept that consistent theme throughout the whole thing, um, just, just played around with a lot of stuff and it worked. They said they liked it. <laughs> and so <laughs> that was an accomplishment for me, right? So um, yeah, so far it was, it was just so much fun and I hope to continue to kind of do this every year where I can bring some new fresh ideas um, and then like just make it fun for people to look at because numbers can be boring sometimes. So why not make it look interesting? So um, just want to point out some highlights because obviously with the annual report, there are some things that we, uh, you know, are required to share, you know, but we don't want to just share the bare minimum. We want to we want to share all the stuff that we're proud of. And so we try to pack in it in as much as we possibly could in here with our limited space. But some of the highlights I'd like to point out are, um, you know, as we start at the beginning with the early reading data, you know, 51 percent increase in kindergarten early reading compared to the national increase. 25% increase in first grade early reading compared to the national increase. I think that's pretty remarkable and speaks volumes about our L4L team and the teachers that are making this literacy thing a priority in our classrooms. Um, on, on the left page, page five, we break down the growth that we have had at the academy level and at the high school level for um, the growth of AP courses. I believe we've got um, 750 students graduated with dual credit um, in the last two years, it's a 23% two-year increase. We have 431 professional certifications, a 214% two-year increase. 1,500 dual credit courses earned by students, a 50% two-year increase. Just a lot of this stuff that wouldn't normally be included in these sorts of reports unless we really wanted to be proactive about sharing that. And I do want to shout out, you know, Dr. Grover, Ms. Worthington, and the L4L team for ensuring that we had all of that so that could, we could be a part of telling that story. Even the budget page, I feel like it's pretty great to look at, which is exciting when you're looking at a page full of numbers. So <laughs> anyway, graduation rate, that's the big one. I know that that's not, we're not unveiling that for the first time this year, but the graduation rate of 87.27% highest we've had in the last five years, I believe. And then what that constitutes, we showed that progression of how we're seeing growth compared outpacing the state average in all of the key demographics there. And then a brief little snapshot of what the uh, Academy of Medical Sciences project at CHI is looking like. So that is a fast and furious look at the annual report. It is live online in both English and Spanish. And by the end of the month, we will be sending this out to mailboxes in the community in both English. And then for those that require Spanish, we'll be receiving Spanish as well. So um, that's, that's the annual report and that's our team. We're, we're proud of uh, the chance to get to make this and where, and where we landed. We think this is pretty solid. So thank you for granting us the space to share. Um, yield the floor for any questions or comments. Thanks so much. Great job, you guys. Mr. Barsness. Well, thank you. I'm part of the, the, the PR, the committee, so I get to hear and hang out with this awesome team all the time. So, <laughs> but um, as we're going through the numbers, you know, every time that we put it out there, it's great to hear the advancements that they're doing, what we're working on, and something that we've all been talking about in different, uh, different committees and the community. We are coming out of a pandemic. We are coming out of just a lot of things happening that some things we have control of, some things we don't, trying to adapt through things. So just having this out there to show it uh, and put it out there is great, great communication. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next meeting. That's right. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Ten point three new full time equivalent positions added to budget for twenty twenty two twenty three school year. Mrs. Irie, thank you. Uh, good evening, Dr. Grover and board members. Um, I am bringing forth um, the proposed positions for the twenty two twenty three school year. This would be adding a total of six point zero full time equivalents. Uh, the breakdown is one teacher at Howard second grade, one at Connickram fourth grade, two at Walnut Middle School, uh, that is one for math and one for language arts, 
a .50, so a part-time custodian added to the O'Connor Learning Center, and a .50 increase for our uh, GISH activities director, so going from a .50 to a full-time, and then uh, a nurse instructor for the Medical Sciences Academy. Are there any questions I can answer? Can you explain that activities director increase? Is that fine arts? Is that? That is for um, the GISH activities managing the extra standards, okay. the okay. whole process. Because okay. right now they're at a 0 .50. Okay. And with the increase of all the extra standards, all the different activities, everything we've been able to offer, it's more to manage. <laughs> all right. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bros. Um, yeah, thank you for the information. Can you tell us a little bit about the process you used for identifying these positions? So, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> losing my voice, I've been talking all day, my apologies. Um, wait, what we did is we went through um, our projected enrollment. So this is, you know, as much of a crystal ball as we can have. We looked at what we have now and what the projected enrollment would be and we prioritized the need based on the resources we have. We had cabinet level discussions with all department heads. Um, finance and I, Dr. Schroeder and I have had many conversations about this, um, so he is confident because this is uh, a $487,050 out of the general fund. That's where it will be allocated for the next upcoming budget. So it has been a ongoing process to prioritize based on current and what we believe will be projected enrollment. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions I can answer? It doesn't look like it. Thank you okay. so much for your time. Thank you very much. 10.4, resolution number 20220414, authorizing increase in micro purchase threshold. Dr. Dexter. And Dr. Schroeder and I have had lots of interesting reading <laughs> with, um, with this change that we're proposing. Um, the resolution, and in the past, we used to read it word for word, and then when it was um, a motion, the board member would have to read it. And we did get clarification on that oh, about a year ago that um, I can uh, go over the highlights, and then you also have a copy to read, and then um, we can just make the motion as presented. So this is information and action tonight. So I'm just going to go through with the highlights. Um, on this resolution, and it is the district's procurement of goods and services was subject to 4312 internal controls for federal and state awards. So that's a real key, federal and state award grants. Then a non-federal entity may award micro-purchases without soliciting competitive price or rate quotations. When we got in with the Essers, um, we kept getting things sent back saying that, well, if it's over $5,000, you have to have a competitive bid. Well, we've never done that for $5,000. It's usually been um, above $35,000, um, and then we can either go out for bids or at the discretion of the superintendent can recommend that, you know, we're recommending this move forward without the competitive bids. But from $35,000 to $90,000 in our current policy does not require competitive bids. So this resolution is to say that we are telling the um, Department of Ed and feds that um, we are gonna follow our existing policy. So federal entity is responsible for determining and documenting an appropriate micro-purchase threshold based on internal controls, and that is our current policy and the internal controls we already have in place. A micro-purchase threshold is not to exceed $50,000 according to um, the CFR. So our threshold is $35,000. We could go as high as fifty, dollars but we're sticking with what's in our current policy as thresholds. The district now desires to adopt higher micro-purchase thresholds than identified in the um, NDE um, specified threshold of $5,000. So on that second page, um, right in the middle, um, for the reasons set forth in the recitals to this resolution, $35,000 for the purchase of supplies or surfaces using simplified acquisition procedures not subject to competitive bidding under Nebraska law. So again, that $35,000 is the threshold we're asking you to approve. 
And then that final paragraph, the superintendent of the district is hereby authorized to revise the fiscal management for purchasing and procurement using federal funds policy of the district to reflect the increased micro purchase thresholds specified herein and to take set all such actions to carry into effect the purpose and intent of the fore foregoing resolution. So the bottom line is we're moving it from 5,000 to 35,000. The 35,000 is already in our policy. And that is the resolution. Question? A little light reading there, Dr. Dexter. Uh, well, and Dr. Schroeder was phenomenal. Um, he, he knew the right questions to ask. He knew when to push, when to back off. Um, but we knew what the federal requirements were saying, and we just had to work through NDE on, you know, this is okay. Excellent. Uh, doesn't look like you have any questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Ten point five revision to policy forty three twelve due to ESSER fund requirements. So this was a policy that we had in place based on um, uh, KSB uh, examples, and so in this policy we had a micro purchase amount of ten thousand, and so we're asking that we um, you approve this policy so that it matches up with our budget authority policy that micro purchases under 35,000 does not require a bid. And that small purchases, anything from 35 to 250, would most likely require a bid. Um, on our policy, it would be 35 to 90,000. That could be questionable, anything above that would require a bid. Thank you, Dr. Bros. I just wanted to indicate that the Finance Committee for the Board of Education has reviewed on more than one occasion what that threshold would be and just recently looked at moving it from it, what it was to 35000 So this isn't something that hasn't been talked about around the table. We have talked about it, and it is part of, of a conversation that we've had, and it's in our minutes as well. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I will be back for action. <laughs> okay, Thanks. thank you. 10.6, construction update. Mr. Petch. Thanks, President Albers. Um, this, this month has been uh, pretty active in the respect that we've got three of our large ESSER projects out for proposal. And so uh, we'll, we'll find out uh, the news of, of what those prices are here at the end of this month and then uh, bring those through F&F &F and then to uh, you guys uh, in May. So we're at least at that point. We've never done that before, having three all at one time, so it's been a little hectic, uh, but we're looking forward to it and got our fingers crossed that uh, we'll bring some good news to you guys uh, next month. Um, working on project list projects as well and uh, getting ready for a real busy summer. But, uh, you know, unless you guys want a whole bunch of detail, I can drag the project list and we can spend another 30 minutes. Or if you have anything that comes up or any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Otherwise, I'll conclude. Thank you. Any I questions? Have, I have a question for you. Okay. Mr. Alinsky. I was a little disappointed in your video on Facebook when it said demolition of Old Engelman and it wasn't the demolition of the building. So <laughs> just wanting to let you know that my morning, my, my, my morning, was kind of let down because it was worded wrong. It was started. They got in there okay. and started demolition. But do we know when that's happening, just out of curiosity? Um, you know, it's a process, and so I don't have a, a day to say, hey, we're going to have the bulldozers are going to start knocking it down, you know, on, on May 2nd. But it'll, it'll be in May where we'll actually start that. Right now, the process is to go in and salvage everything we can, They that the contractor can, uh, prep the utilities, cap everything, and once all the utilities are capped and turned off, then they'll uh, apply for their permit. And so we'll have to kind of wait and see what that is. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up because I also just want to make sure I uh, emphasize too is once we start that demolition process, we'll, we'll want to kind of advertise uh, to the public that if they do want to get some brick uh, or some, you know, memento brick, uh, we'll, we'll make that happen kind of like we did on Selway Park. Um, our goal is to be a complete and have the site, uh, you know, done in, in, at the end of May. Okay. 
just had a lot of questions on it keeps going on it, it's a process it's 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 not a small building it's not a small demo either so thank you okay thank you thank you mr petch Ten point seven student representative report. Miss Ilabeza Isabella <laughs> Isabella Prada Gomez. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Albers. Islanders had a very successful prom with approximately three hundred tickets sold. Students were pleased with the decorations. Although there may have been some conflict in questions regarding after prom, to avoid further conflicts, we are scheduling members. We have scheduling, sorry. Members of the student council have already set up dates for future dances in the calendar, as the student body spoke, spoke out for that. For example, we plan to have a winter ball next year. The J JR2C has, plan has been holding a blood drive in the middle gym. Varsity boys and girls golf had their invitational today. Freshman track invite is also today, as well as varsity's invitational. Freshman baseball is having their double header today as well. Earlier in the week, every girl in tennis won their match. JV boys soccer team won their game against Ligon Pius. Congratulations to the Islander boys golf team tying in first place at the Heartland Athletic Conference Championships and being runner up, runners up as they placed a little off, a little short, sorry, in playoffs. History was made in speech as they won the state duo championships first time since 2004. During Skills USA, we had we, we had our first ever medalist in diesel and technology from CPI. Students received state championship titles and bronze, bronze medals. Tonight is Cabernet, Cabernet night for Sweet Revelations, Future image, image, Ultimate Image as well. Students involved with the production of the Orphan Play had a successful play. Ja, JAG, Jobs for, Ameri for American Graduates, organized Human Trafficking Awareness Walk. Students participated while having the chance to learn about many facts and myths of human trafficking. Hiring fair. I attended the hiring fair and was very happy to meet the faces of many local businesses. While being on the advisory board for my academy, I learned that six students are looking for job shouting opportunities after the hiring fair. Student Council is hosting a cleanup day next week on Thursday after school after school after students noticed lots of trash around in the parking lots. We had our first district officer after attending the state convention. HOSA, Future Health Professionals, placed first place in the anatomy tournament in Omaha, third in the HOSA Bowl, and one of our members placed third. National Honor Society volunteered at Easter Basket Extravaganza. My favorite thing about helping out is seeing, every, seeing the future class creating and growing as leaders in the school. Project Hunger, Hunger is always appreciative of Grand Island Senior High and expressed their gratitude. Louder Than a Bomb Poetry Club made history as they attended their first ever bout for Grand Island Senior High. They plan to create a literacy magazine along Gear Up and intend to hold an open mic night later in May. Unity Council has met Mr. Rausch and initiated plans to create a podca podcast for students to use a, as a collaborative creative forum. We, we had plans to roll out, roll out an episode before the end of the month, uh, next month. Students of Student Council are receiving help from Mr. Rausch, Ms. Mayhew, and BB to create Uni Unity Council's logo. SSAC discussed the overall effect of receiving mental health days and Fridays off with an associate from Nebraska's Board of Education. The conversation was focused on how students were impacted regarding receiving the Fridays off and mental health days. Academic aristocrats were held last night and I was awarded a scholarship through the GIPS Foundation. I love hearing the great accomplishments that came alongside hearing peer stories there are 63 well-deserving students who will graduate with honors and wear honor medallion at graduation. Of these 63 students, 27 of them have earned a GPA of 4.0 or higher at the end of the first semester. These students will graduate with summa cum laude honors and they will wear white stoles. During our graduation ceremony, 36 of these scholars have earned a GPA between 3.75 to 3.99 at the end of the first semester. These students will graduate with magna cum laude honors and will wear gold sashes during a graduation ceremony. Speeches for graduation for the class of 22 are now being accepted. On a person, personal note, I would like to recognize all the good in our high school. For example, students are working very hard academically in all activities as well as this meeting has showed. I can fully say with no doubt that students at GISH are students that work hard endlessly. It does not take more than two minutes to sit in class and notice the efforts that these students put into their school day. 
I am so proud of my peers and my teachers. High school can be very exhausting for these students and very difficult at times. As always, there is as always, there are good days with bad, yin and yang. But for every student that works hard, there's a student who works even harder, giving more than they thought were, was ever possible. We must not overlook the success of all students and, and celebrate not only where they ended, but celebrate where the process to where they have started and the learning journey that they have accomplished. My hope is that every student that graduates from Grand Island Senior High has learned how capable they are to grow and learn beyond what they thought possible as well as knowing there is a solution for every problem. In closing, I believe that the community of Grand Island and Grand Island Public Schools will continue to work together to address any and all issues that affect the success of our student body. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella, well done. 10.8 Superintendent Report, Dr. Grover. Thank you so much. Uh, it was nice to see Isabella last night with her fellow peers um, at the annual um, aristocrat celebration of our academic honors. And I um, just want to applaud uh, Isabella, for, Isabella for being so proactive. I was talking with Mr. Gibberson today. Um, she really does pay attention to what's happening in the school district and try to figure out how to lead efforts for advocacy. Um, even without asking, she's bringing ideas to him. So thank you so much for being such a wonderful school board student representative. Um, so just a few updates here tonight. Um, so cabaret night is at seven o'clock. Hopefully some of you will be able to get out and make it to it to help celebrate our students. This is a time of year where we have a lot of celebrations going on and I couldn't believe it, but I needed to announce this at this particular board meeting uh, because it will um, be here before we know it. And that is graduation is coming up May 15th. And I think our next board meeting is before that. So can you believe tomorrow marks um, one month away from that event? So please let us know as board members if you plan to attend, but also to the general public. We look forward to that. This is going to be a very special graduation. This will be the first year uh, that we graduate our students who have matriculated through all four years of the academies of Grand Island Senior High School. Also, um, talk about being busy. So the students are busy. Um, the staff, we're busy as well. This is a time of year that we are in our recruitment and retention phase. And so I thought maybe I'd bring you just a little bit of update in regards to recruitment and retention. And want to say kudos to our staff for um, just working through uh, everything, even the dynamics of everything that we're reading in the national news about teacher shortages and what does that look like and feel like um, on a local level here for us in Grand Island Public Schools. Um, so just a little bit of context, and you, we have this information probably in the annual report, uh, but just a reminder um, that we have 1,543 total employees within Grand Island Public Schools. Of that, we have 78 are administrators, 867 certified staff, 596 classified staff members. Um, so every year, uh, we always have some magnitude of turnover. You can imagine with a staff of 1,600 um, folks that that's going to happen. Um, this year, um, today uh, kind of marks the cutoff, really is technically April the 15th, but you know tomorrow is a holiday of when everyone has to give a notification. Um, so to date, uh, we have 120 resignations um, that includes 17 retirees. And so you may say, well, what does that look like? So we are getting some trending data, but if you've ever been to a new teacher orientation, we have a little over 100 or so new teachers that we bring in every year. So that's pretty much about the same. Maybe, you know, 10 or 15 more or less or whatever. I don't know until it all shakes out, but that's about the same that we have every year. It's just a little over 100 new teachers. Uh, so the breakdowns, and so right now, uh, we've already been working to fill some of those positions. We still have 65 positions that are open um, to date. We usually try to have those positions filled uh, by June is usually our target. So we still have some time on the clock working towards our target. Uh, we have 25 elementary uh, openings. Uh, we have 17 middle school openings, 13 openings at Grand Island Senior High School. We have seven special education open openings and three at the administrative level. Uh, so I will take any questions if you have it, but just kind of want to let you know how we're pacing along uh, during recruitment and retention season. That concludes my report. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Grover. Okay. Now we'll move on to action items, 11.1. Grand Island Public Schools Superintendent of Schools Employment Contract. Howdy, folks. 
The GIPS Board of Education reviews the superintendent's contract and total compensation for the superintendent on an annual basis. The proposed 22-23 contract for the Grand Island Public School Superintendent of Schools and the copy of the Superintendent Pay Transparency Act notice is attached to agenda item 11.1. The Superintendent Pay Transparency Act Notice was posted on the school district's website in advance of the board meeting in accordance with state statute. Do you have any questions for me regarding the proposed superintendent contract or the transparency notice? Does not look like it. Make a motion to approve the superintendent's contract as presented. Mr. Barsness and Mrs. Hinkle, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Oh, are you not on? Okay. Uh, Eleven point two new full time equivalent positions added to the budget for twenty twenty two twenty twenty three uh, school year. Mrs. Oh nope. I think it's oh there she is, Mrs. Irie. You have to make it official. You have to take the steps. Coming. Okay. Coming. <laughs> My apologies. Um, are there any additional questions? Um, it's being presented to you to vote on to add to FTE count. Any questions, friends? Nope. Make a motion to approve the additional positions for the 2022-2023 school year as presented. Uh, Mr. Mr. Barsonis and Dr. Bros. Okay. <laughs> any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. 11.3 Bloxy, Bloxy Technology Classroom Management System. Mr. Gearhart. Good evening. If you recall, this was a replacement for a tool that we use in all the classrooms throughout the district. Allows teachers to view and interact and control um, students' online activities. Any questions for Mr. Gearhart? I approve the Bloxy Classroom Management Service as presented. I, I was like, really? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Barsonis and Ms. Wolf, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. 11.4, <clears throat> excuse me, new ELA standards adoption. Dr. Bills and, oh, Dr. Palmer didn't look up. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I'm representing Dr. Bills and uh, Mrs. Cole tonight. So they were unable to be here. But last, last month, they presented uh, an update on the new ELA standards revisions. And so it is um, our turn to um, determine whether or not we would like to adopt those um, in Grand Island Public Schools. So we are asking for your approval to adopt the new ELA standards. Any questions for Dr. Palmer? Didn't look like it. Make a, I make a motion to approve the adoption of the new NDE ELA standards beginning as presented. Second. You? I don't know. Mr. Barsonis, Mr. Holinsky, is that you? Okay. <laughs> uh, in, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. 11.5, request for funding for new algebra resource adoption. Hello, last wow. month I came here and presented about our illustrative mathematics curriculum adoption for the high school mathematics, and so this is a request for the funding for that. Are there any questions? Any questions for Dr. Berman? Ms. Wolf? I motion to approve the funding to purchase the described resources for algebra. Ms. Wolf and Mr. Brown? Any discussion? Please vote. Go math. Go math. Well done. Motion passes. 11.66, uh, request for funding for new uh, 4 to 12 social studies resource adoption. Dr. Lee. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, last month, Dr. Tom Jack and I were here presenting on the new proposal for social studies curriculum, and we're here. I am here, she is home with her baby. Uh, I am here to ask for approval of funding for that, for, 
for the resource. Any questions for Dr. Lee? I make a motion to approve the funding to purchase the described resources for 4 to 12 social studies as presented. Mr. Barsonis and Mrs. Jergens, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. 11.7 website and communication vendor. Mr. Rausch. Hello again. Hello. So uh, last month I shared that we were uh, accepting bids from different vendors about updating our website and mobile app and district-wide communication platforms. Um, so we liked Blackboard the best out of the whole field. And um, we did some follow-up reconnaissance based off of the feedback we got from this board. So I want to give you a quick rundown on that real quick. Um, one is uh, what we have been quoted is a three-year agreement. We are fond of that because one, we don't want to trade vendors every year. And two, it locks us into the attractive price that we like without that being touched for at least three years. So we're happy about that. And then um, additionally, a new piece that uh, we didn't get to talk about last month is we demoed a policies plugin, for lack of a better term. And a uh, short story, it made Dr. Dexter and Mr. Gearhart very happy. It's going to allow us to make our policies easier to navigate and to share and to park on our website. And that's only a one-time fee of $1,000, so it doesn't really affect our overall bottom line very much. We are still in the process of deciding on whether we are going to keep Let's Talk or not but that does not affect um, our potential uh, partnership with Blackboard at all at this time. So that's what I've got. If you, I have, if you want to look at numbers, I can pull up the numbers, but um, that's, that's what I've got. Oh, that's okay. Any questions? No, but I would like to motion to approve the Blackboard proposal as presented. Ms. Wolf, Mr. Helensky, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. You made Thank my you. day. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> 11.8, engineering letter of intent for Knickerum Elementary. Mr. Petch. Unless there's any questions, nothing's any questions? changed for us. Okay. Go ahead. Make a motion to approve the ESSER 3 project for Knickerum Elementary as presented. Mr. Barsness and Mr. Brown, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. 11.9 resolution number 20220414, authorizing increase in micro purchase threshold. Dr. Dexter. Yep. Any questions? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Go ahead. Make a motion to approve authorizing the increase in micro purchasing threshold resolution number 20220414, as presented by Dr. Dexter. Uh, Mr. Barsonis and Mrs. Jergens, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. 11.10 <clears throat> revisions to policy 4312 due to ESSER fund requirements. Dr. Dexter. Okay. Any questions? This is a policy update. Doesn't look like it. Um, do you want me to go? Yeah, go. Okay. I motion to approve the revision to policy 4312. Ugh, did I say that? 4312, as Dr. Dexter presented earlier. Second. That, oh, did I miss? Sorry, there's not a thing. That um, is to ESSER fund requirements. My apologies. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, Ms. Wolf and Mr. Barsness, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Dexter. Okay, thank you so much. Now we have some reports. 12.1 uh, Grand Island Public Schools Foundation report. Mrs. Jurgens. I do not have a report for the Grand Island Public Schools Foundation for the month of April. Well, that was quick. 12.2 uh, uh, NASB monthly update. Um, we all get those emails or the flyers in the mail, so go ahead and review that. 13, executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters because it, it is because it is in the best interest of the public to discuss this matter in closed session. I make a recommendation for the board to convene to executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel. 
Mr. Barsness and Mr. Brown? Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes.
a motion to reconvene from executive session. Notification of upcoming meetings. <laughs> Does anyone have that date? Because I don't. May 13th. May 13th. May 12th, May, like oh, you're not helping me. There he is, May 12th. We have a winner. We are adjourned. <laughs>